Welcome to Rule Machine, Hubitat Elevation's most advanced automation app. It allows you to create almost any automation you desire with the devices you have. Now, just because it's our most powerful app does not mean Rule Machine is the best app for all of your home automations. We strongly recommend starting with some of our more easy to use apps such as Hubitat Simple Lighting and Hubitat Safety Monitor. But if you think you're ready for this, we are ready to help, so let's do this. Start by opening up the Rule Machine app in the Hubitat web interface. Click New Rule and give your rule a name. Now you're in. Now a couple of things to know before you get started. Number one, don't use the back button in your browser when using this app. It can do some funny things to your rule and most of them are bad. Number two, the app list button in the corner that looks like a back button, that's not a back button. If you press it before saving your rule, you'll go back to the app list and lose everything you've done. So be careful. All right, let's get into it. The power of Rule Machine is the ability to build conditional rules. These are your classic, if this happens, do this, but if something else happens, do this other thing rules. Everything in Rule Machine is built around triggers, actions, and conditions. A trigger is an event that starts your rule. It's usually a change in something, like a change in motion sensor, a change in a contact sensor, that sort of thing. An action is what your rule will do, like turn on a light or send an alert. And conditions are the parameters your rule will evaluate to determine what action to run. To learn how this works, we're going to set up a very basic conditional rule. For our rule, at 9 p.m., if the temperature in my bedroom is below 76 degrees, turn on the fan. Then at 6 a.m., because I'm an early riser eager to make more tutorial videos for you, turn the fan off. Now when our rule is done, it's going to look something like this. So let's see how we get there. We're going to start by selecting our trigger event. Use the drop down menu to select the type of capability or device you want to trigger the event. The capabilities listed here are based on the devices you have in your system, so your list may be longer or shorter. For this rule, our trigger is 9 p.m., so we will select certain time here, then click into this box to set the time. This drop down lets you choose between a specific time or sunrise or sunset. We'll keep it at a specific time and set it for 9 p.m., like so. Hit done with trigger events here. Now, you can select multiple trigger events if you want the rule to trigger with any one of them, but we only want one. You can use these to edit or delete your trigger events, but we've nailed this so far, so we'll hit done with trigger events. Now that we have our trigger event that will kick off the rule, we need to tell that rule to do something. So let's select actions to run. Ignore this big shiny box and use the drop down to select the type of action you want to add. Now if we just want to turn the fan on regardless of temperature or any other factors, we could just select control switches. Then select turn switches on, select our fan, and be done. If we click done here, we have a fully functioning, very simple rule that turns on the fan at 9 o'clock every night. But we only want the fan to turn on if the temperature in the room is above 76. That is a condition, so let's go back into our select actions to run page. We're going to delete the original action. And now we need to add a conditional action. So use the select action type drop down and select conditional actions. Next, select which action. For our rule, our first action is a simple if then statement. If the temperature is 76, then turn on the fan. That is a simple conditional action, so select that. This other option adds a whole bunch of else or then complications that we'll get into in another video, but get a handle on simple conditional actions first so your brain doesn't explode. In the new drop down, we're selecting the capability for our if statement if the temperature is above 76 degrees. So we'll select temperature. Then we'll select the bedroom sensor we want to use. In the comparison dropdown, we want the greater than sign. We're not comparing this to the temperature of another device, so we can skip that. We just want to compare it to the set temperature of 76 degrees. Then we'll hit done. So now we've got our first if statement if the temperature of the bedroom motion sensor is greater than 76 degrees. You'll notice there is an orange colored false right here. That just tells you the current status of the condition. You can see the temperature of the device is reading here. If the temperature rose above 76 degrees, this would turn to a green true. So now let's select the action we want to happen when this condition is true. Going back to our plan, if the temperature is greater than 76 degrees, we want to turn on the bedroom fan. The fan is a switch type device, so using the drop down we'll select control switches. In select which action, we will choose turn switches on. Then click this box to select the fan. We don't want to delay that, 
and we will click done with this action. So our fan is set to turn on if the temperature gets above 76 degrees. For this rule, we want it to turn off at 6 a.m. So the next action we need to select is control switches, right? Wrong. The next thing we actually want the hub to do is wait. So we'll select delay or repeat actions comma wait. Under select which action type, we're going to select wait for events. Because I don't know about your house, but at 6 a.m. is always an event in our house. 6 a.m. is a certain time, so select certain time for the capability. Keep it at a specific time and enter 6 a.m. That looks good, so hit done with this wait event. We don't have any other wait events, so hit done with wait events. Okay, so our hub turned on the fan at 9 o'clock. It waited until 6 a.m. Now we need it to turn off the fan. So in select action type, we will select control switches. In select which action, we will select turn switches off. We'll select the fan here. Then we'll hit done with this action. Our rule is now complete. Notice the box here to manage or create conditions. This is just another way to edit your conditions. Say you've been running this rule for a while and you want the fan to kick in at 74 instead of 76. You can just go in here, select the condition you want to edit, and do that here. But it's not really something you need to confuse yourself with right now, so hit done with conditions. And just a reminder, this is not a back button. Now our actions look good, so hit done with actions. And with that, our rule is finished. Always be sure to hit done to save and activate your rule. You can always come back in to edit it later. A couple of things to note here. This button to pause and unpause your rule can come in pretty darn handy. These locking options can help with troubleshooting and we will get into creating local variables in another video. There are plenty more advanced features to learn, so watch for more tutorial videos soon. Until then, we have some documentation you can peruse at docs.habitat.com, and as always, you'll find great help from great people in our online community at community.habitat.com. Thank you for watching, and thank you for elevating your environment with Habitat Elevation.